Hi guys, I'm getting us all set up for our reading, or I'm sorry, for our math review. And I already did this video once and then you couldn't see anything. So hopefully it's working this time and you can see all my numbers. So what we're going to do first is we are going to compare decimals. So I'm gonna write compare at the top and we're going to start with, let's say 37 and 64 thousandths. And we're going to compare that number to 37 and 64 hundredths. When I compare decimals, I am looking first at my whole numbers and if, I, if my whole numbers are the same, then I need to move over to the decimal. So that's the truth for me. I've got 10, um, in my tens place I have threes, in my ones place I have seven. So my whole numbers are the same. Then I'm gonna go to my tenths place. I go place value by place value because this is the one that's worth the, the next amount, the biggest amount that's next. So I, we have a zero in our tenths place and we have a six in our tenths place. Well, I know that six tenths is worth more than zero tenths. So I know that this is the bigger number. This is 37 and 64 thousandths is less than 37 and 64 hundredths. The other way that I can look at it is to make them into equivalent fractions. The way I can do that is by just looking at my decimal. Here I have 64 thousandths and I can put it over a denominator of a thousand. Over here, I can make it also into thousandths by just adding the zero at the end. So this is easy to see that 64 thousandths is less than 640 thousandths. Because I can always just add a zero onto the end. So I'm gonna give you a problem and I want you to try it all by yourself. So while I'm erasing, I really do want you to go get a piece of paper and a pencil and see if you can compare these. So you are working on, let's say, I'm just gonna look at the decimals this time. And I'm going to say, What do you think? Can you tell right away which one's bigger? My tenths are the same, my uh, hundredths are the same, and here I have a one that's bigger. I gave you one that was too easy. So I'm gonna try another one for you to do on your own. This one is going to be six hundredths, and I want you to compare that to 60 thousandths. Which one is bigger, six hundredths or 60 thousandths? Or are they exactly the same? Try to figure that one out. Are you drawing lines to compare? That's what you should be doing. Look at your tenths place. They're the same. Look at your hundredths place. They're the same. Now here I have a zero and I have nothing right there. But that's the same as having a zero right there. So actually I found out that these two are equivalent. Okay, the next thing that we're gonna look at is adding fractions, and we're just gonna do a quick review of adding fractions. When I have a number like this, and I'm going to add it to this, 37 and 46 hundredths plus three and four tenths, I just have to make sure that I line up my decimals. So I start by writing my first number first, though we know with addition that the commutative property tells us it doesn't matter the order. And then I know this number, I need to make sure my decimals are lined up. So I actually write the decimal first and then I fill it in. Now I have them lined up right on top of each other. Any place where there's a zero or where there's a blank, it's just like there's a zero there. So now I can add six plus zero is six, four plus four is eight, three plus seven is uh, 10 plus one is 11, and then uh, zero plus three plus one is four, and my decimal stays right where it is. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing with subtraction. My first number has to come first in subtraction because I cannot use the commutative property to describe it. Um, but make sure you line up those decimals. And the last thing I'm gonna remind you of is rounding. We like to use rounding on a number line because it helps us get a clear picture of what we're doing, but it's not always the most efficient, so we're gonna look at both ways. Um, I'm going to start with the number 12,340 
five, I'm sorry, not 12,000, 12 and 345 thousandths. First, we're gonna start by rounding it to the nearest whole number. Anything to the left of the decimal is a whole number, so we're starting there. So, since I'm rounding to my nearest whole, dec whole number, on my number line, I'm going to have the part that I underlined on this side, and then the next whole number on the other side. My next whole number is 13. Now I can tell that this is gonna be halfway, which is 12.5, and I only have 12.3. So I know that my answer, 12.3 on the number line, is gonna be about right there. So that tells me that it's closer to 12. Instead of drawing a number line, I can always look at my very next place value. If it's less than five, I know it's gonna be on this side of the number line, so it's gonna be closer to 12. If it's five or more, I know it's closer to the next whole number, so it would be 13. So 12 and 345 thousandths rounded to the nearest whole number is 12. Let's look at another one, and this time we're gonna look at the, uh, we're gonna look at the hundredths place. So I'm gonna have 63 and 428 thousandths, and we're going to round that to the nearest hundredths place. We're rounding to the nearest hundredths place. If this is something that's hard for you, I want you to try to practice these where you underline the whole number all the way up until the place where you're rounding. If it says round to the hundredths place, you underline all the way through the hundredths place. Now you know if you were gonna do a number line that it's 63.42 on this side, and over here we're gonna go up just one hundredth. So that would be 63 and 40, 300. So it's really zoomed in on our number line. Now here would be halfway in between, which would be 4.425. So this right here would be 63 and 425 thousandths because it's halfway between 42 hundredths or 420 thousandths and 430 thousandths. Now I can use this number and say, oh, that's this is 425 thousandths. 428 thousandths would be right about here, which means it's closer to my next whole, or my next 10, 10, or 100. So 63 and 428 thousand rounded to the nearest hundredth is 63 and 43 hundredths. Okay, try the next one all by yourself and 